Welcome to the Maths of Weaving. This video is going to introduce you to some of the maths behind weaving and move forward through time to show you how important it's been for a lot of the technology we rely on today. This is a picture of a jacquard punch card. It's just holes in a piece of card. Could that really be exciting, revolutionary, influential? Macclesfield Museums believes that they are all three. Can we persuade you? What connects these two pictures? The top picture is a jacquard hand loom. It's used for weaving silk. A pattern is converted into code that's then punched as holes into the cardboard sheets and this controls the image that's woven into the silk fabric. The bottom picture is a laptop computer which we're more familiar with now. Many of you may have done some coding or know that computers rely upon code to function. So what connects the pictures? And the answer is coding. They're both programmed using binary systems and the development of the first one led to the technological advances needed by the second. What are binary systems? It's a system where there are only two options. It could be on or off. It could be a one or a zero. It could be up or down. take a step back and start with the weaving. Macclesfield is known as the silk town. The town developed and grew along with the success of the silk industry. In the 1820s there were over 70 silk mills in the town. Macclesfield Museums has the largest known collection of jacquard hand looms in Europe and they're still housed in their original location at Paradise Mill. The jacquard mechanism shown in this picture is named after Joseph Jacquard from Lyon in France, who invented it in 1804. He built upon work done by several other people, but his was the first practical and fully automated weaving system. The card mechanism gives the code and controls which threads are lifted and lowered with each pass of the silk in the shuttle. A hole means that the warp thread's raised and no hole means that it's left down. Each card contains the pattern for one row in the weaving or one pass of the shuttle. Before this time, individual weavers would have had to use a pattern and tell another worker, probably a child, who was sat on top of the loom which threads they needed raised and lowered. The child would then raise and lower the threads by hand. It was easy to make mistakes using this old system and it was very slow and very difficult. It was very hard to perfectly reproduce the same image time and time again. With the replaceable cards, the same loom can be set up to produce different patterns at different times. So what does all this have to do with binary systems and coding? On a loom, there are two sets of threads. There's the warp threads that go up and down and the weft threads that go left to right or weft to right. When you're weaving a pattern, if you want the weft thread to be seen in a row, then it needs to go over a warp thread. If you want it hidden, then it must go underneath. These are the only two options over or under, so it's a binary system. This is an image of Joseph Jacquard woven in silk using one of his own Jacquard machines. How many Jacquard punch cards do you think were needed to produce this one picture? Was it 16,000? 20,000? 24,000?
it took 24,000 punched cards to create this picture in the woven silk. Cutting all the cards accurately and lacing all 24,000 together in the correct order was months of work. Jacquard card cutters needed to have phenomenal powers of concentration. The actual weaving would only have taken a day or two because most of the work's in the preparation. The final silk picture was so detailed that many people who saw it in a frame thought that it was an engraving. These pictures were very expensive and only made to order. There are only around 20 of the original woven pictures that have survived till today. One person who owned a copy of the picture was Charles Babbage. He was a mathematician, philosopher and mechanical engineer. He's best known for his difference engine, a mechanical calculator, and for the idea of his analytical engine. The analytical engine was never built, but it's often regarded as being the first true computer, which led to him being called the father of computing. Punched cards, just the same as those we've seen used in the Jacquard mechanism, were how data was fed into Babbage's analytical engine. Ada Lovelace was introduced to Charles Babbage at one of his parties in 1833. He showed her an early model of his difference engine. She was fascinated and they went on to work together. What Ada could see that other people hadn't recognised was the real potential of the analytical engine. She saw it as having possibilities way beyond that of a calculator. She famously said that we may say most aptly that the analytical engine weaves algebraic patterns just as the jacquard loom weaves flowers and leaves. The engine might compose elaborate and scientific pieces of music of any degree of complexity or extent. The work that she did led to her being known as the first computer programmer. So we've seen that punched cards began as a set of instructions to be read by a machine, just like in the jacquard mechanism. But these binary systems are now used to do much more powerful things. They're used for storing, searching and manipulating data. You're surrounded by equipment that uses binary coding. It's used in computers, smartphones, digital TV, smartwatches, and games consoles. So we know it's important, but how can we use binary systems and how can we write numbers in binary? We'll start by talking about counting and numbers. We're very familiar with a base 10 counting system. We don't often call it that, but that's what we use when we say a number. When we write down numbers, the place value is very important. For a four digit number, we have one column for the thousands, one for the hundreds, one for the tens and one for the ones. The numbers in those columns tell us how many of each of those values we have. A five in the tens column means that there are five tens. We're going to start by taking apart the number 3964. For this number, we know that we have three lots of 1,000 and we write a three in the thousands column. Next along we have 900, so that's nine lots of 100 and we'll write a nine in the 100s column. For the tens, we can see that there are six lots of 10, so we write a six in the tens column. We're going to finish with the ones. There are four ones, so we write a four in the ones column. This step by step process means that we can now show the sum for 3,964 as 3,000 added to 900 added to 60 added to 4. You're comfortable with that process, and we can do the same for a binary system. 
The number system we just used was called base 10, and there were 10 options for each place value. We can write any number between 0 and 9 in each column. For a binary system, we only have two options, so for each column, we can only write a 0 or a 1. To work out the place values for a binary system, we don't increase by a multiple of 10, like we did before, but by a multiple of 2 instead. So, for the smallest value, we have 1. To work out the next one, we multiply it by 2. 2 times 1 equals 2. So we can do this for the next column along, and we'll multiply by 2 again. We know that 2 times 2 equals 4, so that's our next place value. Looking at this pattern, can you predict what the place value will be for our final column? 4 times 2 equals 8, so our last column will have a place value of 8. Now that we know what our place values are, we need to work out how to write numbers that we're familiar with as sums of these place value amounts. We'll start with a low number. How can we make five using only eights, fours, twos, and ones? Remember, we can only have zero or one of each number. Eight is bigger than five, so we know we need a zero in the eights column. We can make five using one lot of four and one lot of one. Writing this in binary, we don't have any eights, so there's a zero in the first column. We have one four, so we have to write a one in the fours column. Can you see what we will write in the last two columns? We don't have any twos, so we'll put a zero in that column. And then finally, we have one one, so we need a one in the final column. It may look strange, and it does take a bit of getting used to, but five in our most familiar base 10 number system is the same as 101, 101 in binary. Let's do another example. Let's look at the number 11. How many eights can we get into 11? Only one. If we try to add a 4 to 8, we get 12, and that's too big, so we don't need any 4s. What about 2s? If we add 1 2 to 8, we get 10, and that's okay. We're up to 10 now, so we need one more to make 11. This gives us the sum we've been looking for. 8, add 2, add 1, equals 11. We write this in binary as 1 in the 8s column, 0 in the 4s column, 1 in the 2s column, and 1 in the 1s column. 1, 0, 1, 1. Let's try it the other way round. Let's go from binary to base 10. Can you work out what this number is? 1, 1, 1. It represents no. If we do that sum, we can see that 4, add 2, add 1, is 7. So 1, 1, 1 in binary is the same as 7 in base 10. Now you're thinking like a computer. Well done. So we've worked our way from holes in a piece of card to powerful computers, and you now know the secrets behind the codes. Have we persuaded you that these punch cards and the weaving technology was exciting, it was revolutionary, and it was influential? I hope so. This video has been made by Macclesfield Museums, and the accompanying resources were kindly funded by the Institute of Mathematics and its applications.